What's up, everybody? Welcome in Love with Horror. Your destination for all things horror. And this is your end of the week horror news update, y'all. We got some great stories to cover. Off the top, we're going to be talking about some exciting updates for the Exorcist Believer sequel, y'all. Can't wait to talk about that because that's hype, y'all. That's hype. And the next story, we're talking about R.L. Stein confirming what the next uh, Fear Street film will be for Netflix. And then we've got uh, our last main story. We'll be talking about a lot of or a couple of mysterious teasers that are appeared online regard, uh, for Neon's next horror films dropping this year. And they are super creepy, y'all. So make sure y'all stay tuned for that. And then, of course, at the end of this, we'll be talking about some horror movie casting updates that we got. And that's all coming up. So stay tuned. So it's official, y'all. David Gordon Green has exited the Exorcist Believer sequel. Now, for me personally, this is exciting news. <laughs> I was hyped when I heard this. Right. Because, you know, I, it's no secret. I am not a fan of the Exorcist Believer. I know you think it's okay for some reason. Yeah, I thought it was a good watch. I don't, I don't, know, how you th- <laughs> I don't know how you thought that, but uh, I thought I personally thought it was terrible. Um, and in my opinion, this gives the Exorcist Deceiver hope. Does it, though? Because, yes. I mean, let's... Now we have to they have to find another director. Mm-hmm. We don't know where that where that's gonna lead. They might have the same writers. It might not have even been David well, Gordon's fault that it might that, have been the writing. That's what I was gonna bring up next. Okay. Is that we you know, we can kind of get somewhat excited, right? Well, because David Gordon Green is credited as, you know, a writer on this oh, film. Okay, he yeah. helped to write the mm-hmm. story and screenplay and all that. Now, that's what I was gonna say. That I think next, because Scott Teams also helped write the Excess Believer. Now, Scott Teams, if you remember, he also wrote the screenplay and story of Insidious the Red Door. Yeah. Another film that I thought was awful. Right. So yeah. they would need to get another writer, too. That's right. Yep. <laughs> they need to just get rid of everybody <laughs> and just get a whole new team. Because think about it, right? They spent, Universal spent $400 million mm-hmm. on this, right? And they already intended for this to be a trilogy. Right. We already know all that, right? But if you've already spent all that money, it's already gone. Why not give it the opportunity to actually be something good, build something new, build something that people actually want to go see. Yeah. Make it what it's supposed to be, right? The exorcist is meant to be unsettling, unnerving, scary, like true pure horror. And that's not what we got in Exorcist, exorcist Believer. You know what I'm saying? I personally thought we got a terrible story, bad dialogue, you know, weird pacing, just weird choices mm-hmm. that for it to be the sequel to the original exorcist just didn't work for me. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So for me, I was excited when I heard this news. And it also they also removed The Exorcist Deceiver from the release calendar. It was supposed to come out on April, 18, April 18th, 2025. But it's now been pulled. They gave that date to the Michael Jackson biopic. Um, but now, we, you know, to me, this feels like they're going back to the drawing board, right? Yeah, for sure. And they Starting can, over. And they can do it. <laughs> they can build, uh, you know, a whole new story with this sequel. And the only returning, the only returning piece could just be that demon. Yeah. They don't have to bring anybody else back. They can they don't even got to bring back legacy characters. That's true. You know what I'm saying? Linda Bla- Linda well, Blair's I kind of hope they don't do that anyway. Yeah. I didn't see any point of that in the in the last one it's, either. So. It's not necessary. Right. Like you you can build an exorcist film for the new generation mm-hmm. that can be as effective as the original exorcist film uh was back in uh the seventies when that came out. Mm-hmm. The seventies, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes I guess I can't remember sometimes the sixties or seventies because Especially when I remember all the, the all the footage from that era. It was, it was like, oh, it was right, a black yeah. and white. Remember, it's like a documentary talking about people running out of the theater. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, I know I'm, I'm personally super, super excited for this. I know you're kind of indifferent because, you know, you never really mind was, the believer. Okay. But I think. But that, I get it. But I yeah, I want, I want this to be a film that everybody likes. I want to go on Rotten Tomatoes and see this shit's got 90%. Or over 90% for both critic yeah. and audience rating. Well, I definitely wished it had done better yeah. overall. Yeah. I was kind of disappointed that it didn't do as well, wasn't yep. received as well. So, I mean, if they feel like they got to get rid of David Gordon Green to accomplish that, then I'm, I'm for that. Right. Yeah. Just yeah. Re- revamp the whole team, y'all, and write something new. Y'all can do it. I'm, you know, and I'm sure y'all want to do it because I'm sure this did not meet the the metrics they set for. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Like money, I mean, I feel like critic ratings, they wouldn't have paid that. so much money if uh-huh. they felt like. Oh, it's a struggle to get this back. Yep. Obviously, they saw a hope in them being able to recoup that and more. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. But so, y'all, let us know what y'all think about this news down in the comments below. And do you think they need to go ahead and get rid of the rest of the team to kind of revamp the story for The Exorcist Deceiver? I think they can do it. But y'all let me know what you're thinking down in the comments below. Now, we already knew that Netflix is working on a new Fear Street film. But we didn't know which 
book in the series they're going to be working on. But R. L. Stein has taken to uh, X. I almost said Twitter, but he took to X to actually confirm which book in his series that Netflix is going to be working on. So R. L. Stein took to X and he said, and I quote, I can finally announce that a new Fear Street movie is about to go into production for Netflix. It's based on my Fear Street book, The Prom Queen. Good news. Now, uh, I don't think I personally ever read any of uh, R.L. Stein's Fear Street novels. I didn't read any of the Fear Street series, okay. actually. Cause, uh, and if I did, I don't remember him. Okay. Yeah. So both neither one of us are familiar with that particular book. Uh, but let's go ahead and read the book synopsis so we get an idea of what the film could be about. Now, the book synopsis reads, A spring night, soft moonlight, five beautiful prom, prom queen candidates, dancing couples at the shady side high prom. These should be the ingredients for romance. But stir in one brutal murder, then another, and another, and the recipe quickly turns to horror. Lizzie McVeigh realizes that someone is murdering the five prom queen candidates one by one, and that she may be next on the list. Can she stop the murderer before the dance is over? For good? That's actually a premise we, that we've seen in her before. Yeah. There's that, remember that one horror film that came out, I think in the 2010s, I want to say? It was called Prom Queen. And oh, it was kind of yeah. it was kind of like yeah, in I vaguely this, remember that. Yeah. It was kind of in this vein a little bit. Maybe they were um, kind of basing it off of that a little bit loosely. Right, yeah. Um, well, yeah, that, that probably is, that probably is right. But I mean, this sounds like I don't I don't even know. It's just it sounds like a very typical type of premise, like, you know, serial killer coming after you know teens at a mm -hmm. the school event, which happens to be this dance, that's yeah. the prom. But I liked all the other Fear Street ones, so I think that they can make this good, though. Yeah, I agree. The and I was going to mention that what was unique about the other ones they made was they made a trilogy. They finished all the films and they released them. One weekend after another back in 2021. So we got the first one, the one weekend. That next weekend, we got the second one. The next one, next weekend, we got the third one. I thought that was really actually an incredible experience because I don't think we had ever seen something like that up until that point where they release a whole trilogy of movies back mm -hmm. to back like that. And it maybe we'll see that with The Strangers or something like that this year because The Strangers trilogy is supposed to come out all in one year. Um, but I agree the last, the last trilogy of films, uh, for Fear Street on Netflix were done pretty well. So if they can at least match that quality and storytelling, uh, maybe this one will come out pretty good. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. But y'all let us know what you think down in the comments below. Do you think that they could pull off, you know, making another, uh, I don't know. They haven't said this will be a trilogy or anything or not. This, this could I think be, this one be just standalone. Yeah. Like, a, yeah. So it's probably gonna be just a one-off standalone film. But let me know what y'all think about the previous trilogy of Free Street films. And if you liked it, do you think that this one can live up uh, to the standards that they already set? Drop all your thoughts down in the comments below. So Neon has been dropping some real cryptic and creepy ass teasers uh, for one of their upcoming horror films for this year. Now, these teasers, they're super short. They're like around 30 something seconds for both these teasers. We got the first one last week and it featured, uh, you know, a family and there's this weird, you know, not one one call where the dude was talking about, oh, it's not my daughter. And then it showed a crime scene photo. It was real creepy in that they had that like analog horror ambient type of sounds, right? And then just, a, I think it was either today or yesterday, they dropped uh, another teaser. And this teaser um, featured what looked to be an FBI agent uncovering some stuff underneath some floorboards. We saw like a crucifix on the floorboard. They popped it open in some sort of like box or chest or vault out something like in the floorboard. And then it cut to this weird ass image of a person under like a black sheet or black coat cloak or something like that. And again, it had that, those weird horror ambient vibes that just get under your skin. You know what I'm saying? The sounds, um, these teasers were incredible. what do you think about the teasers? Did you find them kind of creepy or did you see them? Yeah, I did see them. Yeah. They are really creepy. Yeah. It's like those ones where like, you almost want to watch it with the sound off because the sound, the sounds do weird. Mm -hmm. Like it gets under your skin. It gets in your head a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, uh, with when the first teaser dropped, you know, people weren't 100% sure which film this is going to be for, right? But with the second teaser, it's pretty much, even though it's cryptic. I did. It's, it's pretty much confirms <laughs> that, it pretty much confirms that uh, this is for Neon's upcoming horror film or Horror, to me, it's like a horror, true crime type of film, right? Yeah, more uh, so then. Yeah, called Long Legs. Uh, now, it's set for release uh, this year. And let me give you the synopsis for Long Legs. FBI agent Lee Harker is assigned to an unsolved serial killer case that takes unexpected turns revealing evidence of the occult. Harker discovers a personal connection to the killer and must stop him before he strikes again. Now, this, uh, this movie features uh, Michael Monroe as the FBI agent and then Nicolas Cage as the serial killer which I think is like the perfect match. Mm -hmm. You know, we love when Cage is doing something crazy, crazy right? So it's perfect. 
but I think the premise sounds good. And with that, with this most recent teaser, I, I feel like that connects. And, you know, now it's pretty much confirmed. This is probably long legs. But I like the marketing campaign approach for this mm-hmm. horror film. What, what are your overall thoughts about the marketing campaign and then what you're hearing about the synopsis for this film? Well, it gets people talking, right? Trying to, trying to figure out mm-hmm. what it is. Um, and, I mean, it makes the most sense, even with the first one, being that if you look at the dip, because they're comparing the long legs and the cook. Cuckoo or yeah, it was cuckoo. Cuckoo, something yeah. like that. There's a different one. So if you look at the synopsis, it's pretty evident which one it um which one it is. But I mean, I like the marketing for it. Like I said, it just kind of sparks the conversation around mm-hmm. it. Um hopefully we get a an a actual trailer soon because this one does come out pretty soon this year. So I mean I'm looking forward to it. And yeah. like you said, like to see Nicolas Cage as a serial killer, like oh, yeah. that, that sounds dope. It's to gonna me. be it's gonna be dope, y'all. And this film is actually coming from Oz Perkins. Um, he worked on The Black Coat's Daughter, um, I Am the Pretty Thing That Lives in the House. And I think he also did, hold on, let me make sure I'm, well, I'm looking at the right thing here. Yeah, he also, uh, this is what I'm going to break. He did uh, Greta and Hansel, but he also did an episode from The Twilight Zone, the recent, mm-hmm. you know, um, uh, updated version that you know Jordan Peele hosted and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, so he's got some, you know, interesting things under his belt. I think a lot of people are excited for this. I, I think we both are looking forward to this, especially after those teasers. I'm hoping that the actual movie matches the vibe of these teasers and it being, you know, like very like true horror, very like almost like real life horror, but, you know, adding some of the, f- the horror fantasy elements mm-hmm. set on a, you know, true crime backdrop. It has a potential, I think to be crazy dope but y'all let us know what you think down in the comments below are you excited for long legs did you think those teasers were creepy as hell if you haven't seen them i highly suggest you watch them because they're really they were kind of unsettling like when you when you watch it put some headphones on i promise you'll probably be a little unsettling but let me know what you think down in the comments below y'all now let's jump into a few horror movie casting updates starting off first with isabella uh, merced being cast as dina in the last of us season two now i mentioned on the last horror news video we did that now the one of us has played last of us part two I've seen videos and things like that about it. So I'm not too familiar with the Dina character. I think she's a, a friend uh, to, I think, Abby or something like that. Um, but Isabella Merced, is, uh, she most recently was a voice in Migration. Uh, she played oh. She played Kim, but I couldn't remember exactly which. Well, I don't know which one Was that, that the other uh, Bluebird female? I don't remember her that he, name that at the all. Dude, that the dude that the teenage boy's talking to? It might I can't have been. Remember. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember she, any of their she names. She was a voice. She was a voice in uh, Migration, but we both liked that movie. Yeah, like, it was I thought good. it was pretty fun. Um, and she's done like a few different things. She was in like Sicario. She played Dora and Dora Explorer. So she got a few different things under her belt. Uh, let us know what, what y'all are thinking about this casting choice. Do you think that you know she fits the Dina character, especially if you've, if you've played the game? Let us know if you think that she matches, um, you know, how that character is uh, in the game. And hopefully, you know, season two will shape up to be pretty good. Maybe they'll go in a different direction, like I said in the last one. Let's hope so. Know. Next, we got Annette Benning joining the cast of Maggie Gyllenhaal's Frankenstein movie. Now, this Frankenstein movie is coming from Warner Brothers Pictures. Now, last week, I think it was last week, mm-hmm. or earlier this week, we had talked about the Guillermo del Toro Frankenstein oh, movie yeah. that's coming to Netflix. So this is actually a separate project, y'all. And so Annette's actually joining Christian Bell, Penelope Cruz, and Peter Sarsgaard on this Frankenstein project. And this one's a little bit um, interesting because it's, it was there was like rumblings that this was coming from Warner Brothers, but I guess after the strikes is when they officially announced like, hey, uh, we got the green light, we're actually going to do this. And this Frankenstein movie takes place in I believe the 1930s, 30s. and it's about you know Frankenstein uh, going to the doctor to try to get you know uh, a bride for himself because mm. you know you feeling a little alone, you know you <laughs> want a wifey, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I guess they find um they find a, a you know a woman that was recently murdered and they uh, bring her back to life and then. You know, I guess like this very tumultuous relationship builds and the police, you know, I guess start, you know, running them down. And I guess it just gets really chaotic and maybe like a crazy romance story type mm-hmm. of thing. Uh, I think it sounds interesting. They definitely got some great, you know, yeah, people, in the people in the cast. Yeah. yeah, some good folks for sure. Absolutely. So, you know, we'll see how this project turns out. I mean, it looks like it's just getting started. So. I'm kind of under the impression that we probably won't see it to next year. Uh, but y'all let us know down, down in the comments below. Are you excited for this Warner Brothers uh, Frankenstein project? It sounds interesting, but which one you look forward to more? The Guillermo del Toro Guillermo one? Del Toro. Or yep, the Warner Brothers one? <laughs> I, I'm in that camp. I think the Guillermo del Toro one is probably going to be a lot more exciting. Uh, and that also has a great cast as well. Uh, so drop your th- your comments down in the comments. Drop, 
Dang, I fumbled all that. <laughs> Drop your thoughts down in the comments below, y'all. <laughs> Next, we got some Smile 2 uh, casting news. And we just talked about some casting news for, for uh, Smile 2 in our last uh, mm -hmm. news video. Uh, but this time, we got uh, Rosemary DeWitt and Kyle Gowner being uh, casted in the Smile sequel. Now, um, Rosemary DeWitt, she's a, a new character. She's going to play a new character uh, to this uh, to this franchise, but Cal Garner, of course, of course, played Joel Man. in the first Smile. So I feel like this casting choice kind of gives us the indication that this is going to be a Continue. direct sequel to the first mm -hmm. uh, Smile. And if y'all have seen the first Smile, you know how that ends. Like this yeah. shit is going to be very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure it's going to be super crazy. Or you know, I was thinking this too. It could be one of those situations where like. You know, they feature his story like maybe in the very beginning, and then it goes like to somewhere else. Uh, you know what I'm trying I hope to say? They don't do that. It's possible. I want. I want to see him try like to, actually play out the, yeah. the thing in the. I mean, know. I just really like uh, mm -hmm. Cal Gallner. So. Oh yeah, he, I think he's a, a credible actor, and, and you know, I'm a big fan of Smile. So. Yes, we know. That's, or, I don't know. I just really wanted a prequel this time. I want to see the beginning, like how this all started. Well, I some kind of. I'm glad that he's back. Obviously, yeah. but I'm also like, uh, man, I kind of wanted some beginnings. Yeah, but I think that what they'll do is, given the circumstances of the first Smiles finale, I think that this will be a situation where you will get backstory, but it'll be like yeah. exposition stuff. Yeah, I know. I don't you know what I'm like trying to it say? Like that. I want to actually see it. It can still out. be good. You know <laughs> well, I'm mean? not saying it won't be good. I'm just saying that's what I wanted this yeah. time around. That's yeah, all. yeah, I feel you. I feel you. But y'all let us know down in the comments below, what are you thinking about uh, these casting choices so far? They're also joining Na Naomi Scott and Lucas Gage, who's already been uh, casted as well. So let me know your thoughts or, and let me know how you think the story will play out. Do you think that, you know, like we said, that they might feature some exposition and actually give you the true origins of this? Or will they keep it a mystery and just let another story play out? Because right. I, I feel like you can't do the exact same thing. Right. So, so I feel like you're going to have to talk about some way to... Yeah. You know, fight back. You know, you're you're gonna have to explore origins, weaknesses, and that kind of stuff. So, hopefully, they've been able to cultivate like some good lore that'll make it exciting and interesting, and not just kind of be like, "Damn, like mm -hmm. this is what this is what this was or is." You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, but let us know y'all's thoughts down in the comments below. And finally, for our last casting update, y'all, we got Lawrence Fishburne joining the uh, The Witcher season four. Now, uh, he's joining the cast as Regis, a worldwide barber surgeon with a mysterious past. Who joins Geralt. So it looks like he might be what a tag along, tag along. on the journey in mm -hmm. season four. Now, season four is when the new Geralt's taking over, right? Yes. And who's who's playing <laughs> What's who's his playing name? him again? Isn't it Superman? He's one of the Hemsworth brothers, right? Oh, it's that guy, Liam. Yeah, is it I think, Liam. It, I think it is him. Yeah, right? it is Liam. It's yeah. Liam. Well, yeah, they what you think about that? <laughs> um, you know, i i I don't I get why they do it, but dang. Mm. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Do you think that it's still gonna be worth watching though? Without I, without Henry Cavill, I'm not gonna lie. Like I stopped watching it this past season. Only watched like two episodes. I didn't the watch the third season. season at all. I gotta get back. I got. I don't know. It's just not the same as the first. The initial first. The first two seasons. Yeah. First two seasons were. Um, and then like some of the stuff that you really like about it weren't really there anymore. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe I can try to get back into it. But I don't know. It just didn't have the same like flavor right. that they used to have. But yeah. I don't know. Maybe Liam Hemsworth will bring it back. I don't know. I, don't I just know. can't picture him, his face Being on Geralt. the Geralt character. It's weird. <laughs> it, it, that's it's a weird choice, right? Yeah. For them to, I mean, I get why they have to do it. They're like, oh, we got to complete the story. So we got to recast. Yeah. And I don't know. I just don't know if it's going to work. Well, it's gonna have to work. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you watch it. And you just let me know. If I <laughs> Why you use me as a guinea pig? Uh, but, but it's uh, dope that Lawrence Fish. Yeah, Fishburne's I like Lawrence Fishburne, yeah. but I haven't seen him doing stuff in a, a long time. So I wonder thing, how old he'll look. <laughs> the only thing I come that comes to mind for me is John Wick. Like, you know, oh, okay. of course he was in John. Yeah, I don't, well, actually, I don't think well, no, I saw that didn't. one that he was in. Yeah, I don't think he. I only watched the first two. He was in the first two. He was Lawrence Fishburne was in the first two. I think John so. Wick's. What was he doing? I, I don't remember. I don't recall. Yeah, yeah, he was in, yeah, he was in John Wick too because of how that uh he was in the second one. Yeah, because okay, of how, well, how that, that one, one ended. I barely remember the second one. But anyways, y'all, let us know what you think about this casting update for The Witcher season four. Are you excited that Lawrence Fishburne will be joining? Who is actually watching? Still watching The Witcher? Let me know that too. Yeah, that'll be interesting. <laughs> is Especially, it worth finishing season three? Because I yeah. literally only watched the first two episodes. And you know they did that split. 
they had like the first drop of season, then they did like another. Oh, that's half. right, the part two. Yeah, definitely didn't watch any of those. But yeah, I don't know. The story just didn't feel the same anymore. Yeah. Yeah, so y'all let us know your your thoughts and if it's worth finishing. And then if season four is going to work with uh, the new casting for Geralt, drop your thoughts down in the comments below. So that'll do it, y'all, for this end of the week horror news update. Let us know what was your favorite story from this update. And then let us know if there's a story that we missed that you want to talk about, because we'd love to discuss that down in the comments below. But make sure you like this video, you share it, you comment, y'all, and then check us out over on Patreon. Join us there, y'all. And then, of course, subscribe to stay up to date on all things horror. Until next time, peace.